This is the fifth part video, titled, He Finds a Notebook of Experience and Can Experience Anything He Writes. Please, do watch all the previous parts to enjoy this video. Zhang Suk has arrived in China. In the hallway, he saw the scroll, which was probably going to change his life. The scroll has a painting of a man holding a book. The man was missionary Paolo. The book, however, looked similar to the notebook of experience. The circular pattern over the cover was the same as the notebook Zhang Suk used to gain his skills. Zhang Suk wasn't sure if he was seeing it correctly, so he takes a picture on his phone and zooms it. The picture was blurry. He was not yet sure. He called one of his old friends from the meetings. He needed his help to get access to the museum. However, the old man breaks the truth to him. The painting hanging in the museum is a replica of the original. The originals are kept hidden in the safe lockers. He can't give him access to the museum, but he can get him access to the department where they scan the original paintings and as high-resolution images. Zhang Suk was glad he can get a clear look at the painting. He goes to the department. The man welcomes him and shows him the picture. The man was surprised to see a young boy. He got call from Minister of Science and Technology to give their guest whatever he wanted. He can only imagine his identity. Zhang Suk sees the image and confirms it. It was the same pattern. Zhang Suk asks how they got this painting. The man replies by saying it was a donation. Zhang Suk wanted to know the identity of the donor, but the man refused. Zhang Suk takes the picture and goes to his destination. In an inn, he was thinking about Missionary Paolo. He simply googled it. Missionary Paolo was a Spanish man who led a mission from Spain to Japan. However, Japanese people thought that he came to ruin their country. Not sure of his intentions, 13 samurais attacked him. Even with his bare hands, Paolo had an upper hand on the samurais. Still, the samurai never gave up. But, Paolo gave them a helping hand. He assured them he intends no harm to them. The samurai were impressed by his martial arts skills. They became his pupil. However, in 1992, the village got attacked by missionary oppression soldiers. They burned the village. Paolo was trying to protect them. But, he can't win against the enemy bullets. After taking countless bullets on his body, Paolo died in a kneeling praying position. Jong Suk was amazed by his abilities. He saw the information was written by Nanose Kimura. He remembered she was the one who painted that scroll painting. He searched for her name and found that Kimura Nanose was history professor in a nearby university. Jong Suk makes some calls and goes to meet her. In the afternoon, Jong Suk was able to meet the descendant of Paolo. Jong Suk asks her about the painting of Paolo and the book he is holding. Kimura explains that her ancestors called that book as the Book of Records. Paolo used to write his daily life in it, but the book was empty and there were no records, so the book was never given any special importance. Jong Suk asks if they have the book. As expected, she says she has never seen it. Jong Suk doesn't want to pry anymore, as it was too early to reveal his secret and give away the precious notebook. He takes his leave. Jong Suk was puzzled and questioning himself, why doesn't anyone use this book before? He doesn't want to think anymore as he knows he will get his answers when the time comes. After helping Han and Guk, he returns home. He gives his mother and father the return gifts he got from China. In his room, Jong Suk starts writing about his experiences, but also asking for more information about Paolo. He asks the book if the book had any other skills. The book shows the skills of former owner. They were medicine, theology, astrology, geography, navigation and others. As expected, Paolo had a lot of experience. He pays 200 points to see his experience in China, Japan and Korea. However, Jong Suk was not sure where the notebook of experience came from. He still wanted to know the purpose of this book and why it is collecting such experiences. Jong Suk was not sure if there is only one book like Notebook of Experience. So many thoughts made his headache. He closes the book and leaves to take a shower. The next day, Jong Suk and Han and Guk were invited by the KBC manager. He wanted to congratulate them for getting the highest rating for their channel. Also, he gave them 2 million won as bonus. He was also happy for Han and Guk as Chinese media got the highest results. He asks what he wanted to do in future. Han and Guk replies by saying he is going to work at famous restaurant in Korea. He has a lot to learn too. The manager gives them one another good news. Jong Suk and Han and Guk were chosen for the best couple award. Han and Guk was embarrassed by his sudden statement. But the manager explains they both are chosen as the perfect match to be watched on television. Han and Guk gets frowned saying he doesn't have a suit for the award function. But the manager cheers him up. He says he can give him his own suit. The manager has also nominated for best program chosen by viewers, so he will also join them. Jong Suk takes Han and Guk for a ride. Han and Guk was thankful to Jong Suk for helping him in China. Jong Suk denies it saying he just gave him simple hint. It was no big deal. Jong Suk get a call from his elder friends 
and goes to the gathering. However, it was a new place called Chinsioan Gangwondu. The garden was beautiful as ever. As they enter the corridor, one old man walks to them. He calls them master. Jong Suk was surprised. He asked his principal about it. But the principal was in no mood to answer. Today, they were gathered for a different reason. The old man showed his calligraphy skills. Jong Suk was amazed to see it. But there was something lacking. The other elders knew it. They took a break and went outside. As they were outside, the elders told Jong Suk to take a look inside the nearby library. Jong Suk, being a bookworm, goes to the building. The elders, however, were planning for this moment. As Jong Suk enters, he sees old books. He picks a book and starts reading. The old owner enters. Jong Suk helps him and starts a small conversation. Jong Suk sees the owner was worried for some reason. Upon asking, the old man says his problems keep on increasing with his age. Jong Suk holds his hand and looks at his heart. It was filled with anger. He asks if old man was angry at something and explains how anger can affect one's health. Worries bring anger, and anger harms the health. The old man smiles with surprise. He didn't expect to hear such wise words from such young man. The old man says he was indeed comfortable when he was doing independence movement during the Japanese colonial period. Jong Suk was shocked to hear it. He wanted to know more. The old man chuckled saying it will take more time. He takes Jong Suk to another house where he lived alone. Jong Suk asks about his family and children, but the old man frowned saying, they got separated. He takes out a wooden box. Jong Suk was prying to look into it. The old man opens the lid and takes out a bloodstained cloth. Jong Suk was taken aback. The old man explains, the last time he wore these clothes, he was in prison, chained and tortured. It was August 15th, the Korean Liberation Day. Jong Suk could see the marks of blood and torture on the white cloth. He can only imagine how much pain he must have gone through. Still, the old man says his current life is much harder than before. Jong Suk wanted to know his reason. He sees a letter but the old man chose to keep it hidden. Jong Suk looks at the scrolls of his paintings. He was really astonished to see them. But he didn't feel the same harmony. He figures there is some connection of word, Diodamun, with the paintings. He asks the old man if his concern somehow relates to Diodamun. The old man gets up to leave. But, Jong Suk asks for a painting from him. He sees the calligraphy paintings and says he would love to have one. The old man gets his tools and gets to write for him. He asks what would he like. Jong Suk simply says his favorite word. The old man looked like a mountain while he was writing. The aura was different. The old man wrote, if you do one thing consistently, the results will become much better each time you try. Jong Suk sees and asks to write his name under the painting. It was Wang Myungan. Jong Suk also wanted to write for him as a gratitude. The old man gives him a paper and brush. Jong Suk simply whites some kanji characters, which means the right way. The old man sees that Jong Suk wanted to tell him something. He asks what was its purpose. Jong Suk says he feels that old man's path is somehow blocked by obstacles. He wrote the autumn human, which interpreted that there is no obstacle in the right path. Jong Suk just wants him to follow his heart without any external force and making his decisions for him without any obstacles. The old man signs. In the meeting, the old man, the owner of the prestigious Chen Xiaoan, delivers his decision. He says he is going to sell this house of Chen Xiaoan. The elders gathered were not able to understand his intentions. They just knew one thing, that the old man was selling their traditionally sacred house of Chen Xiaoan, where young people came to learn traditional writing. They opposed to his decision. However, the owner still continues to add his statement. He says the numbers of visitors each year is declining and only 2,000 people visit within a year. Many of them are children and only 100 students came to learn traditional writing last year. It is hard to maintain this house. The elders were looking at the house in a traditional and cultural aspect than making it a business. But it was inevitable. The old owner wanted to sell the house as well as the land to a company. The company wanted to make it a resort. With that money, the owner wanted to relocate the Chinsioan to an urban area like Seoul. The elders already knew it. Because of the remote location, the visitors were limited. With unsatisfied conversation, they left the Chinsioan. The old man asks them to wait for the lunch. But they refused. At the restaurant, Principal comes up with a proposal. He says he will buy the Chinsioan from Wang Myungan and he will keep it as it is. But he just needed some money and time. All the other elders knew it was not an easy task. Some elders made their thoughts too. They will also help the principal. However, it was not enough. In that moment, Jong Suk comes with a plan. He says they should make this game bigger. The traditional calligraphy writing is a matter of responsibility, discipline and culture. Just like Chen Xiaoan, other branches must also be affected. He proposes to call all other elders of the meetings and ask them for help. The idea was great. 
Some elders even had political backgrounds. Zhang Suk suggests to come up with a self-help plan for Chen Xiaowen. However, the elders have to come up with the activity themselves. The next day, Zhang Suk goes to the award function. They had won the best couple award. Hyo and Guk was sharing a drink with Zhang Suk. Zhang Suk asks him to join him on the vacation. He was going to visit China again. But, Hyo and Guk didn't have a good impression of China. He refuses and gives him good luck. The manager was also in a hurry, so, he tells them to leave without him. Just when Zhang Suk was leaving, a man calls him, Chef Lee Zhang Suk. It was a Korean Hollywood star, Mr. Kim Bin. He came for the award function. Zhang Suk recognized him. He was surprised, and even asked for an autograph for his girlfriend. But, Mr. Kim came with a request. He wanted Zhang Suk to make a kimchi stew for him. When he was in Korea five years ago, before gaining any fame and popularity, he lived with a girl. She used to make kimchi stew every morning. It was different and delicious. No matter where Mr. Kim go, he could never taste the same delicious food. The taste remained in his memory. Unfortunately, he broke up with that girl and has never seen her again. Jong Suk agrees to do whatever he can. They exchange their numbers. A week later, Jong Suk took his principal to a new restaurant. It was the same restaurant where Mr. Kim Bin got his fame with the famous drama If I Love You. Since then, the restaurant got a lot of customers. Jong Suk asks if principal finally purchased Chin Seowen and if it is doing well. The principal says he bought it in the form of a corporation named Korean Traditional Calligraphy and Cultural Center. Still, managing the big house was a concern. Principal was still not aware why Jong Suk brought him to this restaurant. Finally, Jong Suk says, what if Mr. Kim Bin also visits Chin Seowen? Would it not increase their foreign tourists to some extent? The principal was not sure if such a big actor would visit their traditional writing house. But, Jong Suk just had a way to persuade him. In the evening, he calls Mr. Kim and asks to visit his house to make some food for him. Jong Suk goes to his room and sees the environment. It was little hot. He makes them sit on a paper and also take tin cans to eat the ramen and tofu. The environment made Mr. Kim remember his old days. Eating hot ramen in hot environment, they got sweaty. Mr. Kim decides to take his cloths off. He was drunk and having fun. He asks Jong Suk to do the same. Just like that, they all were half naked and enjoying their meal. Jong Suk asks, why is the interior of their room always hot? On his question, Mr. Kim explains. When he lived as a normal person, he was always cold and couldn't sleep. That's when, he decided, when he gets enough fame, he will not get cold again. That's it. So now, he always keep his room at a high temperature. Getting drunk as they were, they immediately get to sleep. The next morning, Jong Suk picks up the leftover. He had observed Mr. Kim and his liking in the food. Mr. Kim liked greasy oiled food. Jong Suk starts making the kimchi stew, which Mr. Kim desperately wanted. He adds all the remaining ingredients and remaining leftovers of last night dinner. Mr. Kim and his brother had woke up. Just by the smell, Mr. Kim knew. This was it. The smell and the taste it was the same kimchi stew he ate five years ago. The memory is still fresh. Just like how drunk he would get and eat the kimchi stew next morning. Mr. Kim was now happy. He asks how did he make it. But, Jong Suk didn't want to ruin his sweet memory. He says, good memories should remain good memories. Four weeks later, at Jong Suk's request, Mr. Kim Bin came for his appearance in 119 Rescue episode of Chin Seowen. At his request, Manager Kang also made a special event for this episode. Master Kim of the restaurant also came for the delicious traditional folk food at Chin Seowen. Many YouTubers and power bloggers came to attend this event. This took internet with peak views for any episode from 119 Rescue. After a while, Chin Seowen became one of the hot destinations for travelers from all around the world. It was finally getting the reputation it deserved. After finishing many more crises for 119 Rescue, Jong Suk finally left to his own destination. To find the source of the notebook of experience, Jong Suk left to China. Let's stop here for part 5. The link for part 6 will be updated soon in the description. Join the fun. If you are someone who loves reading manhwa and animes, subscribe now and join us in our journey. Also, get notified for new manhwa updates and hidden gems. Thank you for watching this video and see you again.